Hello and welcome to Iridium Rock and Metal Reviews. And today I've got with me with my mate, Kent Scriber. How are you doing, mate? Hey, Lee. Always a, always a privilege to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on, man. And obviously, Kent's been on a few times and we've spoken about Kent's channel, his YouTube channel, um, Striper Drive. And it's been getting... I've noticed lately, mate, you're getting a few good um, plugs and stuff from guys and who watch the channel and what a great job you're doing. And Well, I've always bumped you up. I, I think you do a great job on there, but people are starting to notice, you know, the, the work you put into it. You know, um, I suggest everyone pop over to Striper Drive and subscribe and watch the videos there. Some of the guests you have on, man, and some of the stuff you come out after watching a video, it's, it's great. I love it. We're... We're fortunate. There is somebody uh, in the striper camp who has, uh, I guess, I'm, <laughs> they they either see that our heart is genuine with it or they've taken pity on us. But they, uh, <laughs> you know, they've been very kind to us and they have some connections. They've uh, they've hooked it. They, I see my camera's getting sticky again. They've, they've hooked us up with some people from the Striper camp that have been involved. And so we're very fortunate for our friend who is, uh, uh, you know, kind of taking care of us mm -hmm. with that regard. So from time to time, we're able to have some, uh, you know, we've had Perry on. I know you've had Michael and, and of course, Perry's wife, Shelly, and uh, Brett Christensen, uh, one of the Striper curators, and uh, Kenny Metcalf, the first keyboardist. Anyway, enough of that. Yes, we've been very blessed to mm -hmm. have some very neat guests on there. Yeah, that's brilliant. So obviously I'll be leaving a link under this video and anyone can check out the channel and, uh, you know, it's great. It's great. I really enjoy watching it. So you bring out like one, usually a video a week in it to so we, everyone can see. We do it uh, every other week, Lee. We have, uh, you know, just we don't want to spread ourselves to, uh, we're not the machine that you are. <laughs> we don't <laughs> pump them out, you know. <laughs> I make but, mine, yeah. mine are simple to do, though, mate. Mine are, <laughs> mine, there, there's no really real, um, you know, apart from a little bit of research. I mean, you right. you can see the work you put into the channel, you know what I mean? And, and those interviews, you can just see it. It's, uh, it I appreciate really it. Yeah, they're put out bi-weekly. And, of course, we you've been uh, our guest on there. Uh, mm. I know that there's one distinct one, that, and then we have you on, an, on a forthcoming one. Mm. I know that will be coming up fairly soon. And then... Who knows? We might be seeing you pretty soon too for yet another episode. So. <laughs> I love it. I love coming on. It is so good being invited rather than hosting. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But obviously, you're my guest today, and I've done one show so far with this topic, and it's choosing. It's hard. Well, it's not really the best track of each studio album because then it's your favourite track, because right. obviously everyone, as you know has got different opinions, um, especially with Striper. There, there's a lot of album-wise, you know, what album's the best, you know, or everyone's favourites, the tracks off each of them. There's a, And that's good. That shows the versatility and the, the different stuff that Striper does. And it always causes different, you know, opinions of what's the best track or the favourite track. So, I mean, there are some that are obvious, I think, on mine, maybe. Some not so much. But... Um, it's an interesting. So we're going to do our favourite track off of each album, and then we're going to do a one honourable mention. You know, um, so I'm interested to find out because we've obviously done these sorts of things before, haven't we? Chose certain tracks off of each album, pits, what time period, that sort of thing, but never right. done one off each. So um, yeah, so it'd be great. I love these because then you get to hear everyone else's opinions of what they think's the best track. And of course, we're not talking the most technical track, the one that scored the most sold the most or anything like that it was a single it's just what we like mm -hmm. an opinion that's right <laughs> so we're, we're going to talk about i've got 14 albums on my list i hope that's right because otherwise i'm missing one or two and we're going to go from obviously the beginning to the, the oldest one to the newest one starting with the yellow and black attack uh but we're going to include the one the extended version, if you like, in case you wanted any tracks off of that. So I know it was released in 84, then 86, wasn't it? But we're talking about the, it was more of an EP, the first one, when it became an album, if you like. So if you're right to go first, mate, your, your favourite track? Okay, well, my favourite track, um, and I'm one of these guys, Lee, uh, no offence to anyone out there, I just, 
in my humble opinion, the 1984 original release, the sixth song release, to me, that's the quintessential version of Yellow and Black Attack. I love the yeah. production. So going from the 1984 album, uh, my favorite track is You Know What to Do. Mm. And the reason why it's my favorite off of that, Lee, is because it really has to do with the, uh, the song structure. Um, you have that acapella intro, mm. and the song has a great sense of melody. It's still a very much, it's a rocking song. It's a cranking rocker, but it has that wonderful sense of melody. And mm. in retrospect, in, ex in, in, in examining that song for your, for your episode here, Lee, I feel like you know what to do off that very first album. I feel like it was the precursor to songs such as Calling On You, mm. Holding On, and, and the lot of, of those type of songs. And what I mean is it's a radio-friendly rocker. Mm. It definitely rocks, but with the melody and the harmonies, it has a, you know, a radio-friendly vibe. So I feel like it's the precursor to calling on you, holding on those type of songs. Um, even though it, it was a little bit heavier than those. Yeah. So that's my, that's my favorite from that album. Have you got your uh, honorable mention? You're almost made then, mate. Uh, yes, I do. Um, my honorable mention is loud and clear. Mm. Absolutely love that. I think it's a stacked screen at the forefront. The first time I heard it, I'm like, what is this coming at me? I'm not quite sure, but I love it already. The song has that wonderful bass breakdown in it. I mean, it's just rocking, and it's got that bass breakdown in it. Killer soloing. Um, yeah. Love it on the uh, the solo. I, I think it's odd. As he, like, rides up the neck of that guitar to make that wah, you know. And there's uh, the solos are just killer in there. Uh, the scream at the outro, you know, show what it's all of. I'm not going to attempt to hit the bow. <laughs> does. It's in the stratosphere. <laughs> And then you have the guitar walk downs, you know, and then that explosive, literally that explosive ending. I mean, you know, love loud and clear. Great song. That's cool, man. I mean, my favorite off of here, and I think it's along the same lines of what you're, you know, what to do with your choice is loving you that, you know, yeah, you're exactly right. It's the same sort of reasons for it. I can imagine that on a later album, you know, with a better production and it would have fitted straight in with the maybe I'm saying on soldiers or, you know, to hell with the devil. Just obviously that for me, the production of that on that album was the only thing that was wrong with it. It was a bit flat, you know, and they hadn't quite got their melody as much as they were going to have. But it, like you said, it showed signs that whole album and loving you was the similar to the reasons why you chose, you know what to do. And my honorable mention was actually, you know what to do. So yeah. Both melodic songs, mm -hmm. probably the most melodic songs on there. I mean, I know there was a, like a ballad and stuff on there, but when you're talking, it's not always the ballads that are the most melodic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the heavier songs are more catchy. Yeah. and yeah. So, cool choice then, mate. And we, we're going to move on to that big... Well, the, what a difference this one makes. Soldiers Under Command. I mean, what a, what a step, uh, step up they had on this one. Yeah, you bet, man. 1985, Soldiers in the Command hit. Yeah. You saw the album cover. It's like, whoa, you know, the guys mm. are looking all cool with their band. And, um, I'll uh, just heading into it. Lee, my my top pick uh, is The Rock That Makes Me Roll. Mm. It's my favorite off that album. The song simply smokes. <laughs> it does. It does. It does. Uh, the, the riffage of that song, the, you know, uh, well, I don't need to attempt it, <laughs> but yeah. the, the, the main riff of that song, and it's frenetic, it's fast-paced, the gang vocals stand up and fight for what you believe in, the phenomenal trade-off soloing in that song. Um, everything about the rock that makes me roll is, is right, and so that's, mm. that's my top pick for that. How um, much energy, energy in that song, man. Yeah. You know when a band, you know when a band's hungry, don't you? When they're first starting out, that's got that full energy, like you know, that that really shows that. You know, that's a great choice, man, for your first choice. Yep. And your honourable mention. My honourable mention, uh, and this was close, but my honourable mention was Surrender, mm. and another rocker getting the lead out, and you and I have talked about this before. 
it boasts such a killer solo in there from Sir Oz with that tremolo, that whammy bar, he puts that tremolo. And Lee, I'll say it again, we've talked about it before. That is the very, I mean, I've heard some great solos from great bands, but that solo with Oz is the very first solo. Uh, I first bought the album on cassette back in the day. I had to stop that tape right then and mm -hmm. there and hit rewind a couple times just to hear it again. And at that time, I did not know how he was making that sound. Yeah. But it floored me. And I absolutely love the song. I love the melody. It rocks. That solo was one of my all-time favorites in the Stripe for Canyon. So anyway, it's my honorable mention. That's my that's my pick of, the, of that album is Surrender. You know I love the medium pace songs, man. That most bands do. That's for some and you know what? The, I only started thinking about the songs that I like the most across the whole of heavy rock and metal since I started doing this channel. And I've re realized that medium pace songs are my thing. They, re they just are. They just click with me, you know. Not the fast rockers, although a fast rocker done right is good. Yeah. You know, and a, and a good ballad is brilliant. It's the medium pace songs that always resonate with me. Must have been, well, since I was a little kid because that's what I'm choosing now is Surrender. What a great song, man. A real epic sort of feel to it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And... Um, I don't even need to mention that solo. That's, you know, we've spoken about that before, that tremolo arm <laughs> bit. I love it. I wish they'd do that. They do that on certain songs across some of the albums. Not all of them, but they do it. It's, a, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I've chosen the classic Soldiers Under Command as my um, runner-up, if you like, my honourable mention. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, what ain't being yeah. said about that song. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, it's, uh, without saying too much, I, I believe, in my humble opinion, uh, in Striker's catalog, I believe that they actually have three anthems that they've created during their career. And I do believe that Soldiers is one of those anthems yeah. among the three. Yeah. <coughs> mm. What a brilliant album. And then, obviously, the heavy hitter. Well, <laughs> most successful album to date for a Striper, To Hell With The Devil. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. what an album. This was probably the biggest one for me you know, that stayed with me all the way through my childhood out of the Striper album. This was the one. This and Soldiers, but this was the main one that I played. played. Put my mixtape on, you know what I mean, with my Striper stuff on. <laughs> yeah. But yep. a brilliant album. I've got a feeling, I know what your um, your track's going to be. I'm not, I know we've spoken about this before, but some of them are going to be a bit of a, a guess, but I've got a feeling I might know this one because we have had conversations, I, but you know, when, when you say that, Lee, I feel, I feel under pressure. Like I'm always <laughs> going to disappoint you, you know, I, but, but that's actually, if I may say something really quick, that brings up a good point in my, uh, you know, Lee, typically with every Stripler album, there's about, I kind of have like a top three songs. And depending upon the day, it can rotate. Mm. And it usually rotates within those top three. And so if I don't choose one, you might think, I mean, you know, there's some that each day I just kind of struggle between one or maybe two mm. other ones. But I simply have to go, I don't know if this is going to disappoint you, but I just have to go with the title track, To Hell With The Devil. Yeah. Um, I, uh, the reason why, when I chose this on the day that I chose it, um, it is, to me, it's one of Stryker's other anthems. Robert's driving drums made such an imprint when I first heard it. It has that anthemic chorus. Mm -hmm. um, the instrumentation drop out on verse one where Robert's just pounding out that rhythm. Michael singing the lyrics. Uh, you know, I love the little uh, twist in there. We'd like to let him know where he can go. You know, and then we get into to Hell with the Devil. But Lee, from the first time I heard that song, it put a tattoo on my brain. Mm. Uh, my brain was tattooed. I couldn't <laughs> it. So on that particular day, when I was making this out, this, this chart out for your episode here, I've got to go with To Hell with the Devil, you know. So That's did I disappoint man. you? <laughs> um, I thought you was going to go with another song, but... It doesn't surprise, to hell with the devil, doesn't surprise me, but I just had a feeling you was going to, the other song might be your um, honourable mention. What's your honourable mention? Was your other, was your, was your guest more than a man? Yes. 
<laughs> that was my honorable mention. <laughs> yeah. Um, I varied, right? But yes, that was my honorable mention. Uh, such a strong rhythm on that song of driving metal. Dun, 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 dun. And, you know, I just got to say, I have a, a very deep appreciation for the for the bold lyrics in that song. And um, yeah, more than a man's my honor. You know, all, you know what you just said about you make the pressure about, you know, <laughs> it's funny you said that because I was thinking to myself, I rank, you called me the master ranker a little while ago. <laughs> I think it was ranker what you said. I'm not sure though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was Master Ranker. Let's clarify. <laughs> yes, the Master Ranker. <laughs> um, but um, I sometimes think, right, I might have done a show, you know, whether it's this one, Striper or not, I don't think I've done a top Striper songs show yet or my favourite song. I've done his favourite albums and all that, ranking the albums. But someone's going to go back because, like you said, you can change. Even before I did five months ago, I might do a ranking and then I might have a show with someone and talk about songs again and another song might be my favourite. So I thought, should I go back? And I thought, no, it's how I feel at the time because we can change, can't right. we? Do you know what I mean? Like yes. today's our, our favorite song today's whatever. So my favorite, I've gone exactly the same as you to hell with the devil and I've gone more than a man. So I mean, awesome. um, yeah, there. more than a man. And that reminds me of the rock that makes me roll off the previous album. They've got that real heavy feeling really like intricate guitar work it really reminds me of that song them two sort of fit beside each other for me more than the man and uh, the mm -hmm. one makes me rock great song for man absolutely brilliant song what, an, what yeah. a closer as well that what a closer to the album oh yeah so then we go to the um sugary i suppose you could call it at the time especially <laughs> in god we trust i mean a, a lot of fans favorite album you know um some good tracks on here but obviously marred or affected by that in my opinion from the production without a doubt made a lot of the songs that would be heavier sound not so heavy some of them um and that's affected a lot of the choices probably of mine i might have chose something different i don't know but what's your choice mate what's your favorite uh my, my choice lee really off of that one and i think you know the album was kind of a sign of the times i mean you had death mm. leopard they went from uh Pyromania to uh, Hysteria, you know, in 87. And uh, a lot of bands at this time were, uh, things were just getting softer, <laughs> generally speaking, yeah. and maybe a little bit effeminate and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not dissing any of that, but just a sign of the times in 88. So my, uh, my top pick from this album is uh, actually the, uh, you know, the title track, In God We Trust. Mm. I liked it because it was, you know, even though that production was there, that, that saccharine production, I mean, in God We Trust could have packed more of a punch, removing some of that gloss. But regardless, the song still rocked. Um, it has that a cappella opening. And I felt like at the time, because see, to me, anytime, especially in the 80s, and I still do it today, but as a teenager back then, with Striper being my favorite band, I didn't just buy a Striper album at the music store and pop the cassette in my vehicle and start driving. I went home and I had a listening experience. Door oh, yeah. shut, headphones on, <clears throat> let me absorb this. And so there I am laying on my bed as a teenager, got the headphones on, and here comes this big opening bombastic vocal, uh, you know, and I felt like I was at Radio City Music Hall in New York, you know, I mean, cause it's just this wide open vocal singing in God we trust. And then uh, we get into the, you know, it, it becomes a pelting rocker. I love the, the format of that song it was mm. great. And uh, we'll get into, you know, some of the saccharine later on maybe, but that's my, uh, that's my top pick from that album. Yeah. Um, my, my honorable mention, do you want me to go ahead and delve into that or pause? Yes, mate. Not go on. Okay. Yeah. My honorable mention, crazily enough, and the reason why this is my honorable mention is because of this song boasts, the way that it is formatted, it boasts such a different vibe from any other thing in the Striper catalog, in my opinion, 
and that is the world of you and I. Mm. Um, it starts out almost, and I'm going to use your favorite term, it <laughs> starts out almost as a power belt. Yes. But it's not. <laughs> and not. Friends out there, Lee loves, he loves that term power balance. So anyway. <laughs> I've, men I've mentioned it on a video today, and you. I've mentioned you today. So there you go. <laughs> so it's not a power ballot, but it starts out, it has that uh, clean guitar opening, and it's just, uh, you know, some picking and some open chording, and then, then this echo effect. And Michael's kind of crooning at the first, so to speak. But then it really opens up and strengthens by chorus time. Uh, and again, that chorus, it has that Radio City Music Hall harmony vocals. The song carries a lot of atmosphere, um, is the best way I can describe it. And to me, it's a standout due to its diversity within mm. the Striper catalog. Good choice, mate. It's a good choice. Um, I went with, my first pick is the writings on the wall. And I felt that this was, for some reason, that sugary sort of production, it, it was less affected for some reason. I don't know why, because it's obviously it's the same production all the way across. I suppose maybe it was a song structure. I don't know. And it's another one that reminds me of that, like we spoke about More Than A Man, we spoke about The Rock That Makes Me Roll. It's got that real heavy, epic sort of sound. Mm -hmm. um, the heights that Michael, I know Michael Sweet was having some issues with his um, vocals and he had to sing a different way and... But I mean, I know he sounded like a, a bit like a girl on that album, but, but I mean, the heights, the heights that he reached on that, at the end of that song are just mental, you know, it's just mad. Um, I can't wait yeah. to hear the, I can't wait to hear the live at Spirit House. I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen with, that, with some of these vocals on this album and I'd prefer it as he sings now anyway. But, you know, I don't think he, mm -hmm. to attempt some of these ones now would just be impossible for most people. Let, uh, you know, it's just ridiculous. Right. And the... Um, well, and, oh, sorry, mate. Yep. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, Lee, the argument with the, with the In God We Trust songs, and like you said, either the Live in the Spirit House or, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this Second Coming too, which is supposed mm -hmm. to feature In God We Trust and Against the Law songs and maybe a few left from Yellow and Black Attack. But honestly, you know, with In God We Trust, I wouldn't mind if it was maybe brought down just a, a half step or something, you know, be, uh, to kind of bring it down just a touch and add some more crunch yeah. and to let Michael do what he's doing now vocally. I totally agree. Totally agree with that. I wouldn't want him to even attempt it as it was. I prefer his vocals now anyway, so... Um, and my right. my second choice or my runner up, if you like, was Lonely. I love Lonely, and I think yeah. um, I think that Good also song. that also wasn't affected by the production because it was such a cool ballad that it it's not a power ballad, obviously, you know. But <laughs> it is it is all right. It is. I was going to make mention, yeah. <laughs> but, it's a cool um, power ballad. But yeah. No. <laughs> I think because of the way that song was structured as well, it didn't get heavier, did it really? It stayed the same all the way through and it didn't affect the production, didn't seem to affect that one either. So Lonely is my um, runner up, if you like, on In God We Trust. So then... And that song, Lee, had, well, mate, yep. Lonely had such a unique rhythm to it. It did. Uh, it kind of had a, forgive me, I don't know the correct terminology, I don't mean to misspeak, but it had like a little bit of a Spanish-y type of mm. flair to it. Mm. Uh, anyway, all to say, Lonely was a great song. It was. Um, controversial against the law. Uh, I know this is one of your favourites, this album, and a lot of fans' favourites as well. And to tell you the truth, some of the vibes you get on here are very much fitting with what we're getting now, in my opinion. The more I listen to this album, and this, I know we're not really talking about the album as such, but the more I listen to this album, the more I love. The more I love it, and this was one that, for me, when I was younger, I was a bit disappointed in. But it's growing and growing and growing, and I think you know, two thirds of this could have easily been released now, and it'll be fine on an album now. Anyway, <laughs> so we're going to get yeah, on to I, yeah, it, it's definitely yeah. You said something, Lee. You're talking about, in my humble opinion. Uh, and especially in the vocal department with Michael, mm. I feel like Against the Law is the album where we 
I feel like that's the beginning of Michael's voice as we're hearing it today. Definitely. He still can hit the highs, but he also has a bit of gruffness to his voice now, uh, which I like. Aggressive. And, yep. uh, Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tot so, totally anyway, agree I love that. the album. My my pick for uh, my my favorite pick for. Uh, I know what this is going to be. I know. Oh, I think I know this one. My favorite pick for favorite song from this is the whole album. No, I'm teasing. Uh, <laughs> I've got to go with all for one. Yeah. All for one. Was that what you were thinking? Yes. Yes. All for one. It has that clean opening. I don't know if it's acoustic or a clean guitar but it has that odd time signature at the intro. And then it just goes into this driving metal gallop. The song, it doesn't let up. It has this authoritative type of vibe with the rhythm of the song and that wall of chorus on the vocals. You know, all for one and one, one for all. It's just this wall of chorus. Um, great trade-off soloing between Oz and Michael. And at the very end of the song, uh, excuse me, the very end of the solo, it's topped off with those little harmonics. And then it goes back into all for one. Just wonderfully done. Brilliant song. As you might say, brilliant, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my, my, uh, and here's that struggle we're talking about between the given day. Uh, my top three songs, um, I struggled for my honorable mention between two. My honorable mention for this day is actually caught in the middle. Uh, my, th my other choice I was fluctuating with was Lady, one of the best power ballads I feel the band's done. But caught in the middle, just another smoking rocker, and it takes no prisoners, just brilliantly executed. Uh, so there, there you have it for my Against the Law. <laughs> That's brilliant, mate. Well, a little while ago, a few months ago, I probably would have had Caught in the Middle and then All for One. That would have been my order, but I am actually exactly the same as you. I'm all for one is first, caught in the middle second. And I think the, the talk about that song, All For One, has made me like it even more. I know it's a fan favourite. I know you. I've heard you talk about it. I've heard so many fans say that's such a great song. And I think it's made me listen to it in a different way. And it's my favourite as well. You, you've said everything there is about it. It's a fantastic song. Because and caught in the middle is quite close behind it, and um, I like caught in the middle. I, I love the chorus because it's a bit different than what in their choruses they're usually full of these harmonising, brilliant vocals. You know, and, you know, we're talking Def Leppard esque. They're one of the best backing vocal bands out there, aren't they? Striper, they're absolutely mm -hmm. superb. But caught in the middle is more of a gang vocal, and I like that. It yep. sounds completely different. And uh, caught in the middle is most, I'm exactly the same as you on Against the Law, mate. That's cool. Brilliant choices there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great minds. <laughs> exactly. This is where we could differ a bit because these are these next few is the little. If you if you're going to say there's a dodgy period of strife, I suppose most people's point of view is this is it. You know, the next couple of albums. Um, obviously, we have Reborn first, which is being redone as well, isn't it, by Michael yeah. as a solo album? Just one quick one, just off the subject a little bit. I hope. When Michael brings this solo album out, it's got a bit of meat to it because I, I prefer the, you know, the new version of, um, what's the new song he's brought out? Solo song. Passion, passion. Right, let's start that again because it make, makes us look like we've done what we're talking about, doesn't it? So, um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah. I, no, but I, it, was, um, it was passion, yeah. Yeah, passion. So, I don't know. I, I enjoyed the song. I could understand the production was better. You know, you can you can hear that. It's miles better. But I don't know. He said he's going to do it as he intends, as he as he did all them years ago. Well, all them years ago, Michael Sweet's solo albums were a lot different than they are now. You know, and um, right. Right. I think it's going to be a lot a more of a mellow sort of album. But I was sort of hoping for the same sort of thing as his last three solo albums. But I don't think we're going to get that. I don't know. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping, but I love the last three solo albums from Michael. I just hope he does. He's got a bit of meat to him rather than mellow them all out, if that makes sense. Because I quite like Reborn. Yeah. I think it's a good well, album. It's just production for me. That was all it was. Yeah. Uh, 
that, like you said, that was kind of a, a crazy time. You know, and here's the interesting thing for, you know, musically speaking, I don't, I, I can't speak for Michael. Uh, you know, I, I don't have any right to speak for Michael. I, I'd just like to point something out. Against the law kind of seems to take a little bit of flack for Michael as far as the, he felt, he feels like musically it was very far removed from Stryker's classic sound. But I've got a point to Reborn. I mean, Reborn was even more, in my humble opinion, more removed from Striper's classic sound than Against the Law. And roughly at least half of Murder by Pride, I feel, was the same way. But that doesn't make them uh, bad albums. Uh, I'll be honestly, Reborn and Murder by Pride, where Striper is at now and has been since roughly 2011, back to doing what they do best, in my opinion, which is just cranking out their brand of metal. Um, I can look back at Reborn and Murder by Pride now more fondly and say, hmm. you know, Striper's back on track. Reborn and Murder by Pride, it was like a snapshot uh, of a time period. And it was more in the uh, modern rock slash new rock, meaning new is in NU. Yeah. Uh, which was a genre at the time, new rock and new metal. So it was kind of a, a time capsule of those two albums. Agreed. Totally agree. Totally agree on that, mate. Well, this is going to be oh, interesting yeah. then, your your pick. I don't know if it's going to be... Is, I mean, And, it, and it was tough. I appreciate these albums more now mm. uh, than I did at the time when I got them. So with Reborn... Um, my top, my, my favorite pick off of that album is When Did I See You Cry? And the reason why is because that song, even though it's far from, from metal, it's, it's that new, new metal or new, new rock, it does have a cool groove to it. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. You know, it's got a cool groove. There's a great a cappella bridge in the song, uh, which I thought really was a distinguishing characteristic. And so for those reasons, I chose uh, When Did I See You Cry off the reboot. Nice. Cool. And your uh, uh, runner-up? Getting into my arm. Yeah, my runner-up then, because, because so much of Reborn was a far cry from the classic, uh, for, from Stryker's brand of metal that, that they uh, produce. It was like welcoming back an old friend, which was in God Week, or excuse me, I should say IGW Twitter. IGWT, that was my runner up hmm. because it was a throwback to classic Striper. It was very welcomed with regard to that new new rock flavor that the rest of the album had. And of course there's there's tasty uh, tasty lead licks in, in that song. So hmm. there you go, my runner up. <laughs> I think one of the biggest reasons why this was so different was literally only because of the production. I think if you chuck Michael's production on the album now, even as the songs are, as they are, they would sound a lot different. They would sound a lot different. That drum sound is awful on these first on this <laughs> for me. Yeah, I don't yeah. like the, I don't like it. But it was a sign of the times, like you said. So, um, okay, then, mate. Well, my first pick is "Make You Mine." Love it. Yeah. Ca catchy, melodic. Um, this, this, these next couple of albums are sort of. People are saying they're not so heavy. Some of them are, but they, they've always had a lot of melody in their music, man. You know what I mean? And um, mm. I don't know. And my runner-up is Live Again. So heavy, yeah. even almost Sabbath-y, like doomy type yeah. riffs going on in that. Love that one. Absolutely love that one. <coughs> so anyway, so Reborn was done. It, it was what it was. And then another step, if you like, towards what was to come. Another step, Murder by Pride. A lot of yeah. pe a lot of fans, not their favourite album usually, but you know, a, a quite highly thought of album really. So, go on, then, mate. What's your pick from that? Yeah, so Murder by Pride, two thousand nine, uh, the second album with Tracy Ferry, and it was one foot in, one foot out, meaning one foot in, back to getting back to that classic uh, metal that Striper produced, you know, and, and still one foot a little bit in some of the the new rock stuff. But my, my favorite's the title cut, Murder by Pride. The mm -hmm. reason why, it's in the vein of classic Striper uh, with regard to production, arrangement, the solos are back. 
One of your favorites, Lee, it's got that mid-tempo uh, structure to it. And it's got the twin leads at the forefront and within the song. So Murder by Pride is my my favorite cut. And it that song sounds like it belongs in Striper's, uh, you know, canon of, of classic metal songs, if you will. Yeah. My, my uh, honorable mention is um, Mercy Over Blame. Um, you know, Love Saves Us All, and it's got that da 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 um, it, it's, it's still kind of new metal, but it has, I can't deny that punchy and unforgettable, unforgettable rhythm in that song. And mm. there's some great soloing within. So that's my honorable is mercy over blame. Cool, mate. I might, I suppose I might be going for the more obvious pick. I don't know. I think this was a single four leaf clover. I love that yep. song. Uh, really melodic. And like I get, you said, um, I think a lot of these songs would have fitted in right now without a doubt. You know, it's just that production again, that drum, that drum sound was still there, you know, that echoey sort of, it wasn't quite St. Anger Metallica drum sound, but it wasn't right. brilliant either, you know. But. <laughs> and uh, the second one I've chosen, well, my runner up is Love Is Why. Mm -hmm. um, it's got that, you know, that sort of melancholy sound that Striper have, that sort of the way they work their harmonies on the guitars, usually, mm -hmm. dro usually dropping down. Wow, wow, that's, I can't sing yeah. it off. But they, they do it so well in their music, and that's got that. And that's, I think, the reason why. And like you said, another step up towards what they are now again. So, um, yeah. Four Leaf Clover, in my opinion, Lee, you mentioned that as being your top pick. And, and, you know, I would say just right next to Murder by Pride, Four Leaf Clover also boasts that classic striker mm -hmm. sound. Yeah. Uh, an added bonus for that, it has the coolest usage of the word unicorn in a metal song ever. <laughs> you know what that song apart from the chorus the, the verses and that guitar riff at the beginning they are straight off of one of them albums them new recent albums straight off of there they sound just yeah yep. fit straight in <coughs> good album man good album but then we get to the um they decided to do a which i think was a really good move because it's it, apparently according to michael sweet it projected them into going back to their, you know, elements of their original sound. And they did the covering in 2011. So what's your favorite offer there, Mike? I've got to go with God. Um, because it is an original Striper tune. And like you said, and like, like you mentioned, Michael, uh, saying, you know, I felt like this album helped with them doing those songs that influenced them, they're like, you know, this is what we do best. Mm. And, you know, you have all of these cover songs and then, it, then at the end is this original song and God is a summation of all of their, the song God, it's a summation of all of their influences and Striper with that song was back in full force. Mm. In my humble opinion, that song right there, it's, it marks the official comeback. Uh, of Striper doing what they do best with regard to their being a metal man. That chorus is killer. Uh, Michael is in the stratosphere. Uh, great atmospheric sustained lead guitar, you know, that kind of goes along with the vocal melody, mm. uh, you know, especially at the onset of the song and throughout. Da, 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 da. Great use of that. Great arrangement with the solo section. It delves into different time signatures. Great vocal ending, and to me that vocal ending it's reminiscent of the uh, the kickoff song from Fallen, uh, mm. and uh, brilliant song. So I have to go with God for that reason. My honorable mention, and I think Lee, in my humble opinion, Striper. What I appreciate, what I appreciate about them as a band, if they do a cover song, they're going to take great care to do that song justice and to pay proper homage to, you know, the band whom they're covering. Mm. And that's a mark of quality from Striper. Um, but I got to give the, the edge to uh, Heaven and Hell, the mm. Sabbath cover. And the reason why I went with that is my honorable mention. Um, it was done brilliantly. It was a great song, of course, to begin with from Sabbath. But lyrically speaking, um, I feel like the song actually kind of fits in with 
with who Striper are as a mm -hmm. band. Uh, it, it meshes with Striper. You know, the lyrics, some of the lyrics, the devil is never a maker. Mm -hmm. The less that you give, you're a taker. It just fits right in, you know. And so anyway, great, great cover of that song, Heaven and Hell. That's brilliant, mate. Well, I chose God. Uh, and I've got to give props to Mark Clower for that because I didn't, so what, when the covering came out, I did listen to it all them years ago, but um, didn't pay the album a lot of attention because I just don't like cover albums. You know, I, I understand why they're done, but I'm not fully into the cover stuff. I, I, like, I like it when bands actually take a bad song <laughs> And they redo it completely and make it so much better. But a lot of them songs on the album, I love anyway, you know, and I, right. I can understand why they've done it, but it's not, you know, I'd rather hear original material. So probably right. God is the whole reason why I've, but he's a great, it's an absolute fantastic song. But Mark pointed it out a little while ago and said, have you heard it? And I, I probably did all them years ago, but didn't pay it much attention. But yes, it's a, one of their best songs actually. So it's a great song. Yeah. Um, and the other song I've chosen is, and it's probably along the reason, same reasons as why I've chosen this is because he's not my best, he's not the best vocalist out there. So Michael's made an improvement over that for sure. And that's Over the Mountain, yeah. Ozzy Osbourne. So, you know, like Heaven and Hell is one of my favourite songs ever, I think, you know, mm -hmm. and I can understand why you chose it. But when I'm looking at that track, I feel like it's a perfect song. You know, yeah. I mean, that's how it feels to me. But Over the Mountain, even though I love the song, by, even by Ozzy, I think they've made a big improvement because it's vocally, it's better. It's heavier, it sounds heavier. Just one of those things, you know. It's probably one of the more lesser songs I listen to as well, the original. I listen to Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell album all day, you know, and I've, I've right. listened to it a million times. But as far as Ozzy's concerned, I don't listen to his solo material all the time. And I think it sounds fresher. If you know what I mean, to me. Yeah. But, um, it's a great song, though. A really good gro groove to that. Excellent. I, I, I think that Oz, I know there's definitely Oz, and I believe Michael also, I think they were both very um, uh, appreciative of what Randy Rhodes had brought to mm. the table and yeah. wanted to, you know, pay homage to Randy. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I can't, who knows why Stryker did the covering? I, I know that you mentioned, and, and, you know, I kind of would have preferred that Striper would have released an album of all new material. I do enjoy the covering, and I'm wondering if they just did it as an exercise to say, hey, guys, we let's get back to what we do best, and here's probably the best way to go about this and mm. to kind of whip us into shape, help us to remember. And I'm awfully glad the covering came out because of everything subsequently released, right? Yeah. And so oh, I, I have a deep appreciation yeah. for the covering. Because yeah. I feel like it ushered in the modern day striper that we know and hopefully we all love. <laughs> definitely, definitely, mate. Well, they carried on that, didn't they? Looking back at their past, if you like, and what, how, what they were influenced by. And then they did their own remake of their songs, Second Coming. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we've, you know, well, you give me your views first, mate, and then I'll go. But what's your uh, picks for this one? All right, so 2013, we were blessed with two Striper albums that year and Second Coming, of course. And I've got to say that in the Striper catalog, Second Coming is in my top tier of the Striper albums in my stack. You know, this is, so here we go. Here, here is something, the proof's in the pudding. Something, something great happened for me from this album. My top pick is Calling On You. The reason why, is because I'll be very honestly, Calling On You was never one of my favorites from The Hell mm. With The Devil. I know it was a radio friendly rocker and Calling On You gave Striper a lot of mileage and I'm mm. grateful for that song. I always appreciated the video. I'm not saying I hated it. It was just never one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, to Hell With The Devil had a, it, nowhere near in God We Trust, but it had that touch of gloss to it. Um, and Calling On You was a radio-friendly rocker. Um, the production of Calling On You on Second Coming, it stripped away that thin sheen of gloss, and it brought just a touch of edge and grit to the song. Hmm. And that was music to my ears. And I readily enjoy Calling On You from Second Coming 
as much as I do any of the other songs now. I can listen to that and bebop to it and rock out to it just mm. like the other songs on that album. <laughs> and therefore, Calling on You, it, I, it, it got a new lease on life with me through Second yeah. Time. So yeah. I'm choosing that because uh, it, it was vastly improved in my humble opinion. So that's my uh, top pick from that album because of that. My honorable mention is Sing Along Song. Um, I've always appreciated Sing Along Song. It had that sheen again, just like a lot of the songs from To Hell with the Devil. But again, with the modern arrangement, they beefed it up a bit. It has a bit more of an edge and it's it has that guitar opening now, that yeah. chugging riff, to, to, yeah. to, 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 you know. And so the modern production, you know, like I said, it beefed it up, removed, removed that touch of gloss, added a bit of an edge to it. Two great songs from that album. They did do a really good job on redoing their songs. Um, but yet again, the new material is what I really was after with that. And that's, oh. yeah. Oh, so did I, did I mess up by not picking between Blackened or uh, <laughs> no. Bleeding from Inside Out? No, I mean, that obviously, well, I've, I've chosen Blackened first, okay. and then I've chosen Bleeding from Inside Out second. Gotcha. I just, you know, I, 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 I'm so glad they did the album, of course, you know, but I've not got a problem, even though there's a, I, I much prefer the production these days that, that Michael Sweet is doing with Striper. It is, whatever anyone says, these Striper fans that say that, you know, Soldiers Under Command is the best production, you know, there, there is opinions, I know, there is opinions, but that's just nostalgia, that's nostalgia, that's all it is, it's just, that, that is exactly what it is. And the production now is streaks ahead of, all that older production, you know, it's miles better. But I still love those songs so much, you know, and, and that's why I think a rehash of them is good. But the standout tracks for me, and if I'm going to play one of the songs on that album, it'll be the new ones, you know, and they, them two new ones as well, that black and the bleeding from the inside out are very fit in again with what they're doing now. Yeah. And they were you know. both, and I apologize that I didn't choose between those two songs. I was kind of looking at it, since all of their old catalog, and we got the two new ones, which I will say, like you, just like the song God from the preceding album, hmm. those two new songs were very good songs yeah. and, and, yeah. and great modern metal songs of Striker, hmm. like God and, and their subsequent material. I was just looking at it from the perspective of from their old catalog, they were re-recorded. Yeah. And so I was looking at them as, you know, being re-records. And so... Um, but yes, Blackened and Bleeding from Inside Out were, were both very, very good songs. I mean, they might not have even, I think they was, they might not have been quite there with what they're doing now. I think God was, I think God would fit straight. But them two were, were brilliant songs, but they've even done better now. Even better. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, just, it's mad, isn't it? But th like you said, these two albums were a massive step. And Michael said it himself, and that's what got them back on track to become what they are now. And yeah. Ain't we glad they are, man? That was the best thing they could have done him, as far as I could say, is do oh, those two albums. Yeah. I mean, they could have carried on churning out. They could have carried on churning out. Not bad albums, but not quite as good as we're getting now. That wouldn't have been a good thing. So, and then we're into the, um, what you call the next stage, I suppose, isn't it, from here? Um, the last four yeah. albums that we've had countless conversations about and what's the best one. And, you know, there's, there's an argument about that on loads of other days, but we're just going to talk about the favorite track. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I think we might be so very similar. We... I think we might be similar on this one. I've got a feeling on this one. No more hell to pay. So on that album, and we're entering the, the Stannis Decker period of artwork and the songs that match those album covers beautifully and brilliantly. No more hell to pay. My favorite song off of that is the title track. No mm. more hell to pay um, on this day. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about that, what I like about that song, you know, Lee, of course we know it's mid tempo. It's heavy yet it's smooth. Um, you know, there's plenty of atmosphere. And I think you mentioned this. I think you mentioned this on one of your episodes from a little ways back, but to me, it has that melancholy sound that you, you, you talk about. Um, kind of with that sustained lead guitar, there's just an air of something in the atmosphere that 
there's almost a sadness or a longing or a yearning or something. Anyway, No More Hell to Pay has a, has a, has a good groove to it. I like the song. It, it, it's, it's heavy, but not overbearing in its heaviness. It's mm. just a smooth, heavy, mid-tempo song. Yep. My honorable mention is a song that's very close in structure, and that's Revelation. Uh, it has that great opening uh, soloing. It's, again, that wonderful mid-tempo metal that I mm. think you've stated that, that you feel like Striper's exceptionally good at, that mid-tempo metal, metal songs. The change up riffs in the chorus, uh, you know, there's a revelation that's coming down for you and the guitarist. Da, 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 you know, the song has a one two punch with that, and uh, those are my top two picks. Well, I'm exactly the same as you, mate. I chose exactly the same. No more hell to pay and revelation second. And you couldn't have said it any different. I, I try to explain their music sometimes, or music in general, and it's hard, isn't it, to get the point across. But you, you're exactly right. They're, they're melancholy way they do stuff. And them two songs, I mean, that Revelation is a strange one when it comes to an opening song. For some reason, it works so well, but it's not like, I don't think they would do that again with future albums. That, I mean, look at the last album. We're going to get onto that. Start with a rocker, end with a rocker. And they do that quite a bit. But Revelation had that almost slow to medium pace. Mm-hmm. Didn't it? Not even medium, even it. It's a strange opener, but one of my favourite songs they've ever done. You know, a great, great song. And um, and then no more hell to pay. Obviously, I'm the same as you, the same way around. No more hell to pay in Revelation. I'm exactly the same as you. No more hell to pay to get onto that one. I mean, that, it almost had a. I think I've said this before. It almost had a feeling like the guitars were not quite catching up with the drums. It was almost like they. Yeah. It's obviously meant to be done. It's not. And uh, I can imagine that's a real hard one to play live. I've said this before. You know when bands play live, they always play faster, don't they? But both of these songs are sort of very sort of slow to medium pace. I can imagine it being hard to stay at that pace, but how cool does it sound at that slow to medium yeah. pace? Both, both of those songs, they're, they're great, man. Great you know, when, when Revelation, when that first opened up that album and the way that Michael's singing and everything in, in the, the, the general atmosphere of that song, it's almost like Striper had been on this long journey mm. and they finally arrived. And, um, you know, they're, it's almost like a bit of road weariness and, mm. and, but, but they're still, but they're staying strong and Michael's just laying it all out on the table, you know, and uh, I don't know how to describe it. Who can? <laughs> you great, know? Man. Great, great Two album. great tracks and yeah. Yeah. That album just brought it to the table. I, I do have to say, Lee, before moving on to the next album, barely, barely missing my, my, my top and then my honorable, I've got to give props to the one. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you know how I feel about song, that song, man. though, yeah. Amazing. And man, a great ballad, and, and I've just got to say the solo, when it first mm. pulls out of the, uh, the chorus into that solo, oh, my gosh, I think that's Oz. And uh, man, it's just kind of this smoky, warm solo. And anyway, I just got to say something about the one really quick because it's such a great song. And I'm sorry. No, I'm glad you did. (laughs) It's a great song. It is a great song, man. Okay, we're on to Fallen, the second of the new era, if you like, Um, 2015. You look like you're thinking about this one. You you haven't changed your mind now. (laughs) No, no, I haven't. what I need to ask you, Lee, how pressed are we for time? Do I have a couple of extra minutes to say something about a song or do we need to rock and roll here? No, I'm not in any hurry. So my top pick from Fallen is the lead off track. And in my personal journey, and, and you know, we're friends, Lee, and we're, uh, you know, we're all respectful of one another and we're genuine friends. And um, there's a reason for any, for any listeners of your channel, I, uh, you know, I am a, a Christ follower. And, you know, uh, traditionally the, the, the Jews, uh, they don't say the name proper of God. And in my personal journey, I just choose to honor that. Um, you know, just like I don't call my dad by his first name. Hmm. Uh, that could be seen as a sign of disrespect. I, I honor my father and, and in that manner. That's one of the ways that I can honor him. Um, 
So I chose the leadoff track. It's, uh, you know, they call it the Tetragrammaton uh, in, the, in the Hebrew language, uh, which of course is YHWH. And that name has a very specific meaning. And there's a reason why I'm saying that. So my top choice is the kickoff track from Fallen, YHWH. It's Striper's power metal epic. It's an epic song. To me, Lee, it's Striper's third anthem. You have soldiers under command to hell with the devil in this song. You have that wonderful acapella choir opening, something totally different. Um, that, the, the guitar riffage in it, uh, it's just pure power metal. Uh, the screams, the time signature changes within the song, and the lyric, lyrical depth. It tells the historical account of Christ's passion. What does this word passion mean? Christ's passion is us. We are his passion, his dying in our place to redeem us. Um, what the name, what God's name proper means, it was given to Moses when he was in the wilderness tending to the flock of sheep. He saw this bush burning and the, the, the bush wasn't consumed and God comes to Moses and he tells him his name. And Moses says, you know, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? What's God's name? Moses says, what shall I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are say, to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. And that's from Exodus 3, 13 through 14. So God's proper name means I am or he is. In the tense of I am, it's eternal tense. It's evermore, past, present, and future. And I've got to say this, and there's a reason why I'm going and being at length here, Lee, is because some Striker fans, when they've had some things to say about this song, a lot of them like the music, but they've said, why didn't Michael tell the rest of the story? It's all about his passion, meaning his crucifixion and dying in our place. You know, Christ could have been seated in an electric chair. He could have been given the lethal injection. Um, but capital punishment at that time was crucifixion. Why did they crucify Christ? Well, he died on our behalf, of course, to redeem us. Um, but some Striper fans are saying, why didn't Michael tell the rest of the story about his resurrection with this song. Michael told the complete story, and here's how, because you have all of this, these verses about the crucifixion of Christ, and then what does the chorus do? It sings, Michael sings God's name proper. Hmm. And God's name proper means I am. It's eternal tense. Christ, yes, he did die, but he rose again he is still alive. He is, I am. In case in point to that, um, Christ, there were some Jews that were cornering Jesus and they, you know, they saw him doing miracles and, and uh, they were questioning him. And, and Jesus talked about seeing Abraham and they said, you're not yet 50 years old, Jesus. And you've seen Abraham. And Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. And Christ was saying, I am God, God in the flesh. I am God's name proper. And it says, and that is from uh, uh, John 8, 57 through 59. And when Jesus said, I am, he was saying that he is God, God in the flesh. And that's why the Jews, it says they picked up stones to stone him to death because they knew what he was saying and they felt like he was committing blasphemy. Um, Anyway, I, I just needed to say that, Lee. Thank you for giving me that latitude. No problem. Friends out there who are Striper fans, Michael told the complete story because Christ, it's all about Christ's crucifixion. And then we get to the chorus, which is God's name proper, meaning I am past, present, and future tense. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> this is what I said, guys, who are watching this channel. Um, thank Kent you for does, that. Kent, Kent does his stuff. He knows his stuff, man. He definitely does. So, <laughs> well, oh, thank oh, you for 
Thank back. you for the latitude, Lee. Um, no problem, mate. You want me to pause right now or, or for a no, minute? No, no, okay. that's fine, mate. Uh, Jesus' name, incidentally, Jesus' name proper, it's Yeshua. That's the Hebrew word, his, his name originally in Hebrew. It means the Lord saves, and that's a double entendre. The Lord meaning the Father, and the Lord meaning him. He is God in the flesh, and he came to redeem us. Um, so with all that said, thank you, Michael, for the great song. It's an epic. That's my top pick, Lee, from that album. Yeah. And then my, uh, my honorable mention is Pride. Mm. Pride has those deep Heavy. pocket grooves, those yeah. grooving riffs, pounding drums, hard hitting chorus belted out. I mean, my goodness, Michael is just, when he's singing Pride, he is just giving everything he has. He's unleashing it. So yes. there you go, buddy. Sorry I took so long. No, 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 it's great, mate. Well, look, I've chosen Yahweh. I think you know, I love that song, man. Um, sorry, everyone. <laughs> I do say, that. I, do, I do pronounce it because I, uh, I, I, I always said that that song is there, like you just said, it's their epic song. And I mean, I've mentioned this a few times. I've even said it to Michael Sweet that I want them to do a 13, 14, whatever length of song it is, because I think they can do a, a job on it. I think they can do a brilliant job of that. And I think that song is proof of it. I mean, it's about yeah. six six minutes long or something like that. Six minutes or something. Yeah. And it's got all it those is. twists and turns, and it's. I just think they would do something amazing with a with a long song. Maybe a bit of acoustic breaking up in there as well. It'd be absolutely yeah. great. But um, it's really heavy as well, isn't it? What a heavy song that is. Mm -hmm. It's just. It's one of them, mate. It's yeah. one of them. <laughs> it's epic. It is epic. And I've chosen the song Heaven as my second choice. Absolutely amazing chorus, so melodic. Um, it reminds me, actually, a little bit of Revelation, the guitar work and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's a great song, man. Um, thanks. Yeah, cheers. That, that's a, some brilliant choices there, mate. And, and one other thing, Lee, about about the, the lead-off track, uh, mm. I, I just want to express one other thing. I don't – it is just a personal preference of mine. I'm not saying anybody is saying or doing anything wrong by pronouncing the name. Um, it, it's just a personal thing on my journey. So please, nobody, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that Striper did wrong by, by saying God's name or that Lee did. I'm just, you know, we're, we have, we're on a personal journey in life, right? And so that's just, that's just one way that I choose in my personal walk to, uh, to kind of be honoring. And so that's all there is to it. Well, the next album was also a bit of a personal. <laughs> some people were offended. Some people, it, it sort of, they understood why it was called it. Some people even became, even, some people even left the band. You know, they, they, some fans even wouldn't listen to them anymore. I've heard that, you know, I won't yeah. listen to them anymore. So, I mean, real extremes, you know, but um, I suppose that's just what everyone's personal, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, obviously, but. Right. They are they are known striper are known for pushing the boundaries, aren't they? They, you know, they, in their own way, they push boundaries as well. I mean, other people who are not Christ followers, as you put it, or Christians or whatever you want. Other people would outside of that faith wouldn't understand. They would say, "What, well, you know, the controversial stuff that goes on in music, especially, mm -hmm. you know, they think, hold on a minute." What are you talking about? You know? right. <laughs> but you can understand yeah. it's everyone's perspective, isn't it? So Goddamn yeah. Evil, 2018. Um, for me, and we've spoken about it, haven't we, what are the strongest albums for me? Um, you know, a, a, a tiny dip in form for me out of these four albums, but still a great album. Um, what's your favourite off this, mate? All right. So my favourite off of uh, GDE was... Oh boy, when Striper does a power ballad right, mm -hmm. <laughs> Lee's favorite power ballad. When oh man, can't live without your love is my favorite. I am not a huge fan of, of ballads or power ballads, whatever mm -hmm. we want to call it. But my goodness, I just cannot deny can't live without your love. In my humble opinion, it is the awesomest power ballad this side of the '80s. It's got a very cool, subtle organ intro. Great, wonderful atmosphere with that warm and smoky guitar tone at the intro. Great melody. 
boy in love with a girl. I mean, it just gets you, you know, right in the feels. It gets you there. And great subtle keys in the chorus, a beautiful celebration of that girl. And so tastefully done musically and lyrically. Um, props to Michael for writing that. Props to John O'Boyle, who did the bass work in that song. There's some little running riffs in there that I absolutely love. Great rhythm change up in Can't Live Without Your Love. In the uh, uh, where the song is, is going out of the solo, there's a change up in there. Stellar outro soloing with more of the change up, which ends the song. Brilliantly executed power ballad. Uh, makes me feel like I'm out kind of for a night on the town with the neon lights or whatever, you know, and maybe maybe that girl meeting my wife at my side. And uh, of course, you know, I've got hair, I've got my mullet going on and my <laughs> wife's hair is a mile to the sky, you know, hair sprayed and, uh, you know, as it was in the eighties and maybe you mm. get your dick lighter. Anyway, that's my top pick. Can't live without your love. Honorable mention uh, is Sorry. Um, mm. Awesome drum and guitar intro. Uh, it's kind of spaced out, spacious with some clean guitar. Mm. Then it delves into that crunchy, punchy riff. Da, 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 you know, just kind of simplistic in nature, mm. but very effective yeah. uh, with that crunchy punch, as I call it. Um, excellent song with that catchy chorus. Sorry. Beautifully done. Good choices, mate. Very good choices. So, Can't Live Without Your Love, that was my runner-up, just to let you know. You said everything about that. What a groove to that song. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but my main song, my favourite song is The Valley. Oh, I love The Valley, man. <laughs> it's just fantastic. Yep. Um, love everything about it. I think it just sums up what they are now, that song. You know, and I think, for me, it was them two songs are really stand out on the album. They really stand out yep. to me. And your, your honourable mention as well. What a great song. What a great song. I just want to say that. That is a brilliant song as well. All three of them. But The Valley is my first choice. And Can't Live Without Your Love's my second. And with good reason. I mean, The Valley is a very powerful song and mm. wonderfully executed. And that was in my top three. Those three songs, mm. The Valley is my third, are kind of in my top three tier with that album. Um, you know, Sorry is more of just a straightforward, uh, I don't want to say a radio rocker, but, you know, more along the lines of just kind of, uh, the Valley has some more depth to it, if you will, uh, with, with arrangement and structure mm. and stuff. And um, I understand why it's your number one, certainly. No worries, mate. We're going to come to the end. We've got, we're on the last <laughs> album, obviously, last year's release, Even the Devil Believes. What a release, man. And um, just, you know, it's just put so much, it just made you think, you know, excited for what's to come. Um, made one of the best albums they've ever done. Absolutely amazing album. Um, I've spoken about this album so much, though, man. It's my most yeah. spoken about album, I think. Obviously, I did the reactions on it, and then we did, we've done reviews, we've done rankings, we've done everything about this album, spoken about it. And why not? Why not? It deserves it. Um, what's your picks, mate, on this one? Yeah, I mean, it's this is a high watermark album. I mean, they just mm. they, Striper just kind of keeps at different different periods. They just kind of keep setting that bar higher. Yeah. And uh, boy, this whole album—it's it's almost like Boston's uh, first released album mm. in '76. I mean, you could <laughs> almost say this is the greatest hits album, you know, because uh, every song is so good. But if you got to pick one, I'm going to go with "Do Unto Others." Mm. Uh, more of that crunchy punch to it. Great riffage. Uh, catchy, memorable, anthemic chorus. Uh, that just kind of wraps up Do Unto Others. Such a great song. Yeah. I know, Lee, I think you said it had that touch of melancholy to it. If I'm not yep. misquoting you, I think I remember that from your assessment. Definitely, Mike. Uh, you know, on your channel. But yes, Do Unto Others, man, it just hits you. Yeah. So that's my top pick. Um, my second, my honorable mention would be you know, again, tough because so many great songs on this album, but I'm going to go kind of for the same reasons as Sorry, I'm going to go with Divider. Um, <laughs> it's got that cool frenetic intro. Uh, da -na -na -na, da -na -na -na. Hmm. Perry has this bass that punches through in the <laughs> yeah, song. Yeah. Bops you right in the nose in a great way. Unforgettable main riff. Uh, you know, that main riff to Divider. Um, beefy gang vocals. 
It has this cool breakdown in the middle of it, which is kind of atypical. It's that it, it's the mm. snare, Robert doing the snare, uh, but it's got that flange effect to it. And mm. then it comes back into the song, Killer Dual Lead Guitar. Anyway, just a, a great kind of a straight ahead power metal riff song. I love it. Good choice, man. I mean, that, that song was probably, when I was doing those reactions, that song was, if talked about the most. That I, when I was coming towards that song, because obviously it was a first time reaction. And as I was doing all the album, everyone was going to me like, Divider, you wait till you hear Divider, you wait till you hear Divider. And although I think it's a great track, mm -hmm. it didn't come up. I don't know. I like that when we're talking about that melancholy that Striper have got. I look for that with Striper, you know. I, I think that's when, they're, for me, they're at their best. But, um, and that's why I've chosen Do Unto Others first. I mean, I, I've actually said that's my favorite Striper song ever. I don't know, that, that could change. <clears throat> At the moment, it's still my favorite Striper song, but as you know, we all, our tastes change. It, that, could, that could change, but what an outstanding song. What an outstanding video. And not many bands make videos now, but um, what a great, great song. It's got everything you'd want. Um, and I've chosen the title track, Even the Devil Believes. And, this is one that um, grew on me. This really did grow on me. I think when I first heard this, I, I said it was good. But then it just all of a sudden hit me in a, in a really good way. Really 80s sounding, those little pinch harmonics going over the, the uh, beginning of the song and a couple of times later. Man, had that sort of 80s feel, that docking stroke, yeah. like mixed with striper feel. An absolutely amazing song. Absolutely yeah. amazing. And what a title track. You want the title track to be epic, don't you? Mm -hmm. It's got to be epic, and it, it definitely is. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's got that breakdown in it where Michael's singing over the drums when it has that breakdown yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No symbols. It's like a like the, a tribal, tribal drumming almost. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. I think it's neat, Lee, when a song, like you mentioned, Even the Devil Believes, the, the, the title track was a grower for you, and I think hmm. it's neat. Mm. When the song might not be your, uh, you know, your top pick or even kind of yeah. the upper echelon, yeah. but over time, there's something that you connect with. And I think that's kind of neat how a song can do that, you know? Definitely, yeah. Oh, man, it's been great. Obviously, we're going to get a few comments under our video, what the favorite, their people's favorite songs are. But just remember, guys, that this is all about opinions as usual. It's right. nothing to do with... Um, the technical solos or the, you know, the one that made the most money because it was a single, it's nothing to do with that. It's just our favorites. And you know, that's just a, that's the cool thing about this music, mate. We can all have our own opinion, you know, it's, um, but I'm sure people will have, and let us know, let us know guys. Any last words, mate, before we go? No, sir. Lee, it's just always an honor and a, a privilege. I, uh, you know, Rex and I uh, are fans of your channel. We were from the get go and uh, I really appreciate you inviting me on for this i sincerely thank you buddy well i knew you'd be the perfect song to break this down for me mate no the perfect person sorry to break it down i knew you'd be the the one to get on here because you i don't know you've got a way to explain stuff so it's it's interesting for me so <laughs> all right then mate i'll see you soon and uh if everyone wants to subscribe to the channel red button bottom right hand corner